Art came to me very early, um, four or five years old, I was already drawing and I could already kind of see, I see this in some of my students that can see how to translate 3D to 2D. So um, I had early signs that just that I could see to draw and my mom likes to tell the story of when we, we lived in Arlington, Virginia at the time and she would take my older brother and I to the National Gallery. And my older brother, of course, would zoom through rooms, almost running uncontained, and my mom would find me frozen in front of these huge abstract paintings, uh, Barnett Newman, Mark Rothko, mm -hmm. Clifford Still, these big color field painters. And then I'd come home, and at the kitchen table, be painting stripes, be painting what I saw. And I was already taking this in in a completely different way than my brother, who was only a year older than me. And early on I was interested in structure, I would say. Uh, my sketchbooks as a kid were all buildings and bridges. Um, and I started to get more serious about it in high school, realizing I could do something with art. Went to college for commercial arts and illustration. And, you know, it's really been a journey because then I, uh, I did a couple years in Chicago doing freelance illustration and realized I wanted to return to grad school for fine arts. I kind of wanted to do pain, drawing and painting really for my own interests rather than being hired to. So I kind of shift gears there. And that happened, uh, it was interesting, a really critical turning point. Right as I was applying to graduate schools, I got an offer I'd been interviewing in design studios and I turned it down, I got this offer and it's one of those forks in the road where if I had said yes to that, I probably would have stayed in Chicago, probably would have stayed in commercial arts. But no regrets, I, I had already, my heart had already shifted more towards fine arts. Artists that have influenced me, I talk to my students about this a lot in that, um, in, in, in a way, trying to get them to understand that it's not about copying an artist that you're drawn to, but absorbing them in a way. What is it about their work, that mystery of their work that keeps you there and draws you to it, and tapping into that and letting it influence your work? And for me, I mean, it's been quite a succession. Any artist would have a scroll <laughs> of names they could say, and it's evident in some of my work very much, uh, but uh, in my youth it was definitely Van Gogh, the thick brush strokes. I was fascinated with all of his work and immersed in it. Um, in college it was the Austrian painters, Egon Schiele, Gustav Klimt, and some, of the, some 80s contemporary painters like Robert Longo, some very figurative works, even though I was so interested in in structures and architecture, I still did a lot of figurative painting. In graduate school, I really, and in the 90s, it was much more um, German contemporary artists, particularly Anselm Kiefer, his massive landscapes, textured heavily, just these haunting images. I still love Kiefer. Um, but when I got into my Highway series in the, in the 2000s, the influence there is definitely current artists of that era that have what I like to describe a uh, exploding chaos to their paintings. Julie Maritou, um, Matthew Ritchie have these qualities, these massive exploding uh, layers in their work. And my highways take on that chaotic disconnect in there. So, but in terms of sacred art, and when I do return to painting the figure, um, I have my mentors very clearly that I look to and I still am learning from. Well known, you know, Caravaggio, Rembrandt, going way back. But to really 
understand how to use the brush and certain coloring. I, I look a lot to John Singer Sargent um, and his just spontaneous marks. They're not overworked. It's just the essential information. I love that. And even the contemporary artist Ode Nerdrum, the Norwegian, um, and how he handles flesh and brush stroke and color and light, uh, they're still teaching me. And I look to them whenever I'm taking on uh, a commission in painting like that. This past year has been uh, probably the biggest range of projects that I've had, which has been really fun and challenging. Um, going from, in the winter, I painted a large landscape of some Canadian mountains, the Three Sisters, with a quote embedded in the texture uh, that was meaningful to this family that, that hired me for it. Um, I'd done eight new saints portraits adding to my series closing in on 100 of those now but uh, eight new commissions there and in the spring and into the summer this is a print of a large painting i did for a catholic school in the twin cities and they wanted me to combine an image of christ with catholic education in pretty much whatever way i wanted to do which i really appreciated the freedom of that but this is a four by five foot painting and embedded into the texture. This is on a wood panel, so I've gone in some of the things that I've shown you, very smooth surfaces, but I often return to this really heavily textured surface. And I've embedded into it, in the texture, this idea of all knowledge and truth and wisdom and virtue comes from the heart of Christ. So I've got, I tried to represent all of science and philosophy and, and uh, literature and math and everything in there along with scripture and works of mercy and everything that we could kind of span so i've got musical notes i've got the um, pythagorean theorems over there um, well i won't go through all the things but it's all embedded and radiating out my favorite is the da vinci drawing down below representing the fine arts way in a way and science the image of um, his famous image of the infant in the womb mm -hmm. that he drew 500 years ago. So this was a great challenge and a, a, a great honor to, to paint this large painting for this school. Uh, but also in August I got back from West Virginia where I painted a 10 by 33 foot mural outside um, on a building that is, you could say, it's a really eclectic building because it's a, a space that has vintage video games and is also a maker space, a collaborative nonprofit space for computer arts and mechanical arts. So I used the doors on the outside as if you were entering into this crazy maze going back in space. And it was a great challenge to be on this huge wall uh, painting this summer. And right now I'm in, the, in my basement studio. I'm working on a commission of a P-51 Mustang World War II fighter plane, which is a great technical challenge. Uh, I think that spans it all. It's quite a range though. <laughs> it's been a lot of fun. So working as a, a career or a life in art, it took me a while to find a good balance in it, I will say. Um, you know, going from commercial art to fine arts, and for a time spending uh, about a five-year period in the late 90s where I was only in the studio, trying to go a full go of, of painting and drawing and gallery exhibitions, and um, 
you know, for some artists, that's kind of the dream to hit to that point. But I found it to be um, too isolating. I'm, I am an introvert at heart, but this was to a point where the isolation kind of sapped energy and motivation from me. So uh, a return to teaching 18 years ago, I had taught a little bit in grad school, uh, some freshmen and sophomores there, but returning to teach art has gave me a new energy of talking about art all the time with students, feeding off of their energy, and it really made my, my studio time more efficient and productive in that I, I don't know, I'm able to hone in. It's less time I have to do it, so I have to use it more efficiently. But there's also that balance between, in some ways, commercial art or being commissioned for projects, which I've really embraced now. Uh, I used to kind of hold them off because I was all about gallery and bodies of work that I was working on. And now I really love the freedom of doing really whatever I want. I still, you know, with like the Mountain series, I'm still carrying on my own interests, um, but yet I'm, I'm taking on sacred art commissions. I'm painting a, you know, a, uh, I just got back from painting a 30 foot mural of mazes out in West Virginia, just a real eclectic mix. Um, and that balance of teaching, of studio, of commission, and of work for my own, uh, it was a long time coming, but it's a, it's a good place. that I'm preparing for and, and both of them you could say are somewhat of dream projects to see completed and one of them is based on this latest iteration of my mountain series my ghost mountains these portraits of which I've done about 125 of them and each one is stamped with a GPS coordinate and number this is all related to mountaintop removal in West Virginia and the number of mountaintops that have been affected by this very destructive practice. This isn't a you know, complete anti-coal necessarily. I come from a family of coal mining immigrant uh, families, so I know the importance of that in West Virginia. But this practice has been so devastating. It's beyond the boundaries of really of balance in, in, um, in the environment. And so I do hope to continue um, and exhibit the whole collection um, as a enormous memorial in a way um, originally I mean I think I'm gonna at least hit the 150 number would be a good point coincides with the Psalms that might be a good stopping point of them because the number is kind of almost unknown at this point but it's well beyond 500 now so I'd love to continue that but I've also been involved the past two years with a mural project in West Virginia of which we're in a fundraising stage would be the biggest work I've ever done it's a flood wall mural, and I did a proposal for this that uh, when I was in West Virginia last month painting a smaller mural, we had some meetings about it, and I proposed doing a preview section of it. Um, the mural would be, the entire mural would be 25 by 800 feet, so probably the largest thing I'll ever paint. <laughs> but the preview section is about one-fifth of it. There's a key area of it behind this stage at Point Park in Parkersburg, West Virginia, um, that would be kind of a standalone scene that could be done. Um, and this, is, this portion would be 160 feet, so again, quite large. Uh, but this is really a dream to see through and quite a challenge uh, that's been in the process and, and still a lot of question marks of how exactly it will come about. But um, it's a major, uh, thing on my mind these days. So the question is about how an image or painting could find me or has found me. And I think the best example of that is the series that I was working on in the late 1990s. This one's an example of it. And this five-year period came after graduate school. It was kind of a merger of this intensity of graduate school where I had, uh, you could say, graduate school wrung the illustrator out of me 
And I went from doing figurative artwork to purely abstract textured work. And that makes sense. At grad school, that is when you are challenged to question everything you're doing and find a way to self-critique. And sometimes that means breaking down everything. So I had that intensity coupled by, I left graduate school and I did a year of volunteer work with Net Ministries. I did mission work, evangelization, of Catholic youth. And that is very intense. And you experience a lot of your own personal growth in faith and conversion and experiencing um, you know, the Lord touching the lives of young people and seeing them affected by this. And so I had these two experiences and when I got a chance to paint again, I started trying to think of how I could depict some of that idea of how do you put form to conversion, to pilgrimage, to repentance, to being transformed, without it becoming a narrative. You know, I'm not trying to do a storyboard here. What is an image? And so these images started to find me, you could say, because of my interest lifelong in structures architecture, archaeology, the images started to build around that. What are these forms I could give that symbolize in a nondescript, you know, it's a timeless, they're not fixed to a certain time or place, but are depicting something being transformed, going through. So a, a labyrinth became kind of a starting point, not a maze, but you know, that journey inward and back out and in the process being transformed. So a lot of the images like this one, this one I titled the all-time turning point, this image almost like a gate of working your way down through and back out. And this series also often had little referential structures like foundations, again, that archaeology of something greater, of something that was already established, and this place is marked by this event of transformation. That image, these images found me and I found them. I guess it was mutual in a way. 